Walking on two legs is so odd. It's such an unusual way to move. There is no other primate, really no other mammal that moves in this way. When did we start doing this and when did we really master it? So to take a step back, I suppose, humans and chimpanzees share an ancestor that lived about six million years ago. And a lot of researchers have been trying to figure out what these early human ancestors were like. My particular area of interest is um, locomotion. I'm interested in how early humans were moving. In this particular case, whether an Australopithecus, once it starts walking on two legs, does that necessarily come at the expense of tree climbing? So if we're going to reconstruct the, the biology of our early ancestors, these extinct humans are long gone, so you can't run out there with a video camera and film them. And so if the question was whether early humans were climbing, I thought there was a really nice opportunity to study another climbing animal, and particularly one that's really closely related to us, and that's the chimpanzee. So here's a male chimpanzee in western Uganda. Uh, he's about to climb a tree. He's looking up for some ripe fruit and he ascends the tree with ease. Now here, if we freeze it, you can see that the chimpanzee's foot is highly flexed. This flexion is about 45 degrees in a chimpanzee, which means they can pretty much pull the top of their foot up against their shin bone. In contrast to this, humans have a much limited range of motion at the ankle joint. We only have about 20 degrees of flexion that we use when we're walking or when we're running. And these kinds of differences between the chimpanzee ankle and the human ankle leave their marks on bones. For instance, this here is a human shin bone, and this is the ankle here. And as you can see from the human foot, there wasn't much range of motion. And the bone itself shows that the forces are distributed pretty equally across the joint. In contrast, chimpanzees with that wide range of motion and that great flexion at the ankle, they have much more bone distributed at the front part or the top part of the ankle joint. And so if we compare these directly now, what we find is that humans have an ankle joint that's shaped much more like a square, and chimpanzees, in contrast, have an ankle joint shaped much more like a trapezoid. What I inferred from that was that the trapezoid shape was a signature of chimpanzee-like climbing. And the next step, and the most important step, perhaps, in this whole process, is to now study the fossils and to study early human ancestors, these Australopithecus, to see whether they have the signature of climbing in their ankles as well. This here is Lucy. Lucy is a very famous early Australopithecus who lived over three million years ago. And fortunately, she has a preserved right ankle. And her distal tibia, or her ankle joint, ends up looking strikingly human-like in being more square-shaped. If this creature was still uh, engaged in tree climbing, their bones don't show it. Now that we know a little bit more about locomotion in our ancestors, we can start to get into questions that flesh them out more as individuals. For instance, Lucy is a female Australopithecus walking around on two legs, presumably would have had a baby. And she would have had to carry this baby, and this baby wasn't riding on her back like in a chimp. And perhaps if the mother does want to go and pick some fruit or do something else, she'll hand off the infant to another female in the group. The expression that it takes a village to raise an infant, something like that may have started back with Australopithecus. Humans are just innately curious about why we are the way we are today. And what this kind of research does is it gives us a better sense of, of our past.